Got to get back to, into my five gallon container. This paint container is only about a month old, but um, and I've used it once, uh, actually a couple times. But I need to get back in here and do some more painting. But when I pull this off, do you see all this? This is this is stuff that comes off it. Ew. Yucky. Um, I need to I need to mix this back up, and I need to put some more paint on the wall. Now I'm going to mix this up for two or three minutes. But when I get done, I'm going to look at it, and I already see that there's things in the paint just from being a month old, just from stuff that falls in it, or just for it. Uh, drying up, when you put the cover on, i got about four gallons left in here, you get air in there, and then that air starts drying out the top, and also you get imperfections into the paint, so when you mix it back up, you just see little goobers and things of that nature that get in here. And the best thing to do with that, before you try to put this back on your wall with a paint roller or paintbrush or anything like that, is to strain this paint. I know! You don't really want to do it, but it doesn't really take that long. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But um, I'm going to mix this up for like three minutes, and then I'll get right back to you. The reason why you got to mix this up quite well is because you get a lot of pigments settling into the bottom and on the edges of your paint bucket. So if you don't mix this up nice and thorough, you're not going to get the same mixture that you had when you put this on the wall originally. So don't think you're just going to mix a little bit of the top because you're only going to use that. Because it may not blend into your wall. Okay? That's why, another good reason why you should strain your paint. Now, sometimes uh, I haven't strained brand new paint. I test it sometimes, and if I see any globs in it or something, I'll just strain it. Get in the habit of just going ahead and straining your paint. You know, it takes a little bit of a thought process because if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, strain a, a five gallon paint bucket like this, obviously you need a five gallon paint bucket to strain it in. If you don't have one, then you really can't do it very well, can you? So uh, what I what I've done, incidentally. Once you start painting and you use some five gallon containers of paint like this, you want to, uh, when you're done with it, you want to clean it all out so that you've got a couple five gallon containers. It's always good to do that. But because I don't have an extra five gallon paint container, I had done some sheetrock uh, work and this is one of my sheetrock buckets. It's not a five gallon bucket, it's a little bit smaller, but I saved these. I, you never know when you're going to need to use a bucket. And uh, this is going to work out perfectly because I only got about four gallons in this in this uh, five gallon bucket. So uh, uh, we're going to strain this paint now. <laughs> 